The Six Million Dollar Man was one of the most popular TV shows of the 1970s. And here's some interesting facts and trivia for fans of the show. Six Million Dollar Man ran from 1973 to 1978. It was based on the 1972 novel Cyborg by Martin Caden. The show started out with three television films in 1973 that were intended as pilots, which then led to five seasons beginning in 1974 to 1978. The plot of the show involves NASA astronaut Steve Austin, who was severely injured in a crashed experimental aircraft. The operation to save his life and rebuild him with super strong bionic limbs cost six million dollars. Steve was given a bionic eye that could zoom in images from great distances. His right arm and both legs were replaced with bionic limbs. He could run at speeds over 60 miles per hour. His arm and legs were now super strong powered by nuclear energy. The show used slow motion effects to illustrate the Bionic Man's speed as well as also speeding up the film from time to time. The uh, famous <laughs> sound used to represent Steve's strength was used first in the season one episode Day of the Robot. But then it was used to show the robot's power in the, in the episode, not Steve Austin's. It wouldn't be used for Steve Austin's abilities until later on in the series. Let's take a real quick time out. I just want to remind you to please subscribe, comment, hit the bell for future notifications. The like button helps support the TV Crazy Man channel. Oh, and if you love science fiction, time travel, and good old-fashioned adventure, please check out my Time Cruisers novel series that I wrote. It's on sale on Amazon right now. Thanks, and on with the video. The Bionic Man's major weakness on the show was extreme cold, which can interfere with his Bionic Limb's functionality until he can get warm again. Now let's take a look at some of the actors that played on the show. Uh, of course, the, the main star was Lee Majors, who played Steve Austin, the Six Million Dollar Man. Lee Majors got his first big break on, t on the TV western Big Valley, where he played Heath Barkley. During this time, Majors was referred to a, as a blonde Elvis due to his resemblance to Presley. After the Big Valley went off the air in 1969, Majors played on the Virginia's last season, which had been renamed The Men from Shiloh. After that, he then got the role of Jess Brandon on Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law. From there, he landed the role of Steve Austin, the Six Million Dollar Man. After the Six Million Dollar Man was canceled, he starred in another very popular series, this time in the 1980s. Another series that was also a personal favorite of mine called The Fall Guy, where he played a Hollywood stuntman who also happened to be a bounty hunter. The show lasted five seasons until 1986. It had a big assortment of guest stars, including Lou Ferrigno, Roy Rogers, Priscilla Presley, Jack Kelly, Jonathan Frakes, Don Adams, Frank Gorshin, Larry Storch from F Troop, J.J. Jimmy Walker from Good Times, and many others, like his Bionic co-stars Richard Anderson and Lindsay Wagner, and his Big Valley co-star Peter Breck, who made appearances in several episodes, including a special Roy Rogers Cowboy episode, where he basically played himself acting as the Big Valley's Nick Barkley. Breck also made an appearance on The Six Million Dollar Man. Linda Evans, who played his half-sister on The Big Valley, also guest-starred on The Fall Guy. After the Fall Guy, Lee Majors reunited with Lindsay Wagner to do three Bionic TV reunion movies, where he eventually marries the Bionic Woman. The first debuted in 1987, set ten years later from the TV series. The Bionic duo were off doing their own things and had had to come out of retirement to fight a criminal organization called Fortress. We find out that Steve has a son we didn't know about before, who ends up becoming Bionic before the show is done. Lee Major's real-life son shows up on the movie, too, playing an OSI agent. Wouldn't it have been cooler if he, he had gotten the Bionic powers? I'm just saying. I think the first one was the best of the reunion movies. I have to say, though, even though TV reunion movies are a lot of fun to see old characters again, the quality never seems as good as the originals. And according to Wikipedia, the first film ended up number four in the Nelson ratings that week. It was supposed to be a backdoor pilot for the new Bionic Man, Steve Austin's son, but it never came to be. Um, the final time we would ever see the Bionic team up of the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman was in Bionic Ever After, which aired in 1994. In this one, we finally get to see a happy ending for the Bionic couple, and that alone makes this one worth watching. 
Richard Anderson played Steve Austin's boss, Oscar. In many episodes, Oscar would show his shock or surprise to a situation by quickly removing his glasses and staring in disbelief. Now, one of the biggest secrets to the success of the Six Million Dollar Man was the introduction of the Bonnick Woman, played by Lindsay Wagner. She even got her own spinoff, of course, called the Bonnick Woman. Martin E. Brooks played scientist Rudy Wells in the show The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bonnick Woman from 1975 onward. Kenneth Johnson was a producer on The Six Million Dollar Man and also on the Incredible Hulk series. And he's given credit for creating The Bonnick Woman. Now, everybody's favorite Bionic Bigfoot was originally played by Andre the Giant, who went on to play in the classic movie Princess Bride, where she was a famous wrestler. But after, uh, after he took on the role, uh, Ted Casty took over. And uh, Ted Casty, uh, you'll remember him from uh, The Addams Family, as the butler. Now, he was smaller than, the, than uh, Andre the Giant, and I think he came off a little bit less threatening than Andre because he was, you know, even though he was still a pretty big guy, he just wasn't quite as big. Now, uh, Ted Casty also provided the intro narration for The Incredible Hulk and The Hulk's Growls before he unfortunately died in 1979. And he was only 46 years old. His death was attributed to complications from surgery a few days prior where a tumor had been removed from his heart. Now, in contrast, uh, Andre the Giant was seven foot four, five hundred and twenty pounds, and Ted Cassidy was six foot nine. So he, both of them were very tall, but obviously Andre the Giant was huge, just huge. In case you're wondering, Lee Majors is uh, reportedly six feet tall. Okay, now one of the things that we all remember from the Six Men Are Man is those toys. Now I. There was a very popular line of toys by Kenner, which was created for the show, which included Bigfoot action figures. Most doll-style action figures from this time period usually range between 8 and 12 inches tall, but Steve Austin was a whopping 13 inches. He had a telescopic bionic eye that a kid could look through via a small eyepiece in the back of his head. And he also had a plastic skin on his arm that could be rolled back to reveal mechanical parts. Now the coolest part of these features on the Steve Austin figure was that he, he had bionic strength. If the owner twisted his head and pushed a button on the back, his arm could lift up to two pounds, of course. Not a lot, but you know. This feature was even cooler because he could make uh, bionic sounds when Steve was lifting things. And they even gave you a miniature car engine packaged with the figure, uh, just to demonstrate his strength. Uh, in '77, Steve was given a bionic grip, and the bionic woman figure came with bionic hearing. And of course, you had Steve Austin's boss, Oscar, who had a figure with an exploding briefcase. And if you opened it in a certain way, it would show an interior that appeared to be scorched by some sort of an explosion. Now besides the uh, Bionic Bigfoot, Steve could also fight Mas Mascatron and uh, he, he was a cyborg with a plastic face that, you could c that covered up his robotic face and he had other masks that would uh, let him look like Steve or Oscar. And of course the Bionic Woman got a Fembot action figure to, uh, for her to fight against. And other toys included Bionic Mission Vehicle, the Command Console, and the Mission Control Center, OSI Headquarters Playset, and the Venus Space Probe. Now, in the episode A Bionic Christmas Carol, Steve visits the toy store, and you can actually see a Six Men Are Man action figure on the shelf behind the counter. Now, the Six Men Are Man also had a lot of comic books over the years. Char originally, when the show was still on, Charlton Comics published a Six Million Dollar Man comic book series and a black and white giant size magazine series and a Bionic Woman comic book. Interestingly enough, the great Neil Adams actually did some work on the Six Million Dollar Man comic book and magazine series. In 2014, the Six Million Dollar Man Season 6 comic book was released with photo and painted variant covers. And a mini comic book series was released in 2018 that featured G.I. Joe, a real American hero, versus the Six Million Dollar Man. 
Now, of course, the entire series, both the Bionic Woman and the Six Men Are Man, are available on DVD. Well, if you uh, enjoyed this video and you like pop culture, science fiction, comic books, good classic stuff like that, please subscribe to the channel. Put your comments down below. Hit the like button. Hit that bell for future notifications so you'll know when we make a new video. I'm Tim Frady. I'm an author and an artist. I make uh, graphic novels like Caveman Comics and uh, uh, several other books that are on Amazon right now. And I also have a uh, science fiction novel series called Tom Cruisers. And I'm working on my own superhero right now called Liberty Ace, which will hopefully be out before the end of the year. So if you want to keep track of all that stuff and have good, good fun time reliving the, uh, the past, then uh, please subscribe and keep coming back. Thanks. Thank you so much.